Welcome to the First Principles video and blog series uh, where we talk about various uh, architectural aspects behind OCI services. At OCI, we take a lot of pride in you know, delivering the maximum performance possible for the least cost possible to customers. Remote DMA or RDMA as we call it has been a core technology behind many OCI services pretty much from the beginning. And we actually recently released a video blog talking about you know, various architectural aspects, you know, historical aspects right from the beginning about you know, why we decided to invest in RDMA and you know, the various products that use RDMA and various you know, trade-offs associated with that. RDMA is essentially, you know, in a nutshell, uh, is a technology that allows for data transfer or network trans communication that bypasses CPU, goes from one machine to another without any CPU interference. And this allows you know, things like GPUs to you know, communicate at extremely low latency, high bandwidth, with low overhead from a CPU perspective. And this has actually been a foundational uh, uh, building block for uh, our database services, such as XSCS and autonomous database services, and as well as for HPC workloads, as well as GPU workloads. And a few years back, you know, we decided to make a strategic bet on Rocky. Rocky stands for RDMA or Converged Ethernet. So, you know, right now we essentially have an Ethernet fabric that essentially enables Rocky and, you know, our HPC workloads, GPU workloads, as well as database workloads all run on leverage that and run on top of it. In the last cloud world, we announced a strategic partnership with NVIDIA around GPU workloads. And in that context, we've been talking to customers uh, as well as NVIDIA, and it's been, you know, it has become very clear that there's a clear demand for very high scale GPU workloads that spans you know, maybe thousands or maybe even tens of thousands of GPUs that can essentially run within a single RDMA network, if you will. Right? It's essentially like a super cluster that essentially supports RDMA. And in order to cater that workload, we went back and you know, decided to make some engineering and architectural design enhancements to roll out what we call this RDMA super cluster that is designed to support very large number of you know, GPUs. To talk about some of the architectural aspects of our super cluster, we have with us again, Jack, who's the lead architect for RDMA networking. Welcome, Jack. Thank you, Pradeep. I'm here to represent the team. As always. All right, so tell us a little bit more about the superclusters. Yes, so let's take a look at uh, schematic here. This is probably a high level drawing. So what we're showing here is we're showing two GPU nodes at the bottom, where each node is comprised of eight NVIDIA A100 class of GPUs that are interconnected using NVIDIA's NV links. This is NV links. And the GPU nodes themselves connect to what we call the network fabric. And the way to think about this is network fabric provides a non-blocking interconnect between all the GPUs, meaning the fabric can provide all the benefit that all the GPU nodes need. And in this case, each GPU node connects to the fabric at 1.6 terabits per second, or 1,600 gigabits per second. That's like the high level view. Now, let's take a look at what the fabric looks so like. So that's like for every GPU, that's 200 you know, gigabits per second? Correct. Each of the GPU gets 200 gigabits of um, proportional bandwidth because there's a total of 1.16. Right, and it's it's fully bidirectional and it's, it's non-blocking in the non sense that any GPU in the fabric can talk to any other GPU Correct. in the fabric at that bandwidth. At the same time, yes. Yeah. Cool. Good observation, yes. So looking at, this is the next level picture of the fabric. So here, we're, here we look at what the fabric looks like. Now we use the word supercluster. By supercluster, what we mean is it's much larger than an existing cluster network. In particular, we have a concept of blocks. So there's block number one here and block number N here. Each of the blocks have two tiers of what we call the CLO fabric. CLO is a particular kind of network design. This is a three-tier CLO network. So this network we plan to scale to tens of thousands of GPUs, and we can envision designs that scale over 100,000 GPUs as well. Got it, so this is essentially a three-tier CLO. Uh, network and so thinking about this, you know, let's say a GPU all the way over here in the block number one wants to talk to you know the GPU at the very right side of the nth GPU mm -hmm. nth block, if you will. 
Well, I can imagine there's going to be additional network latency because of the three tier, you know, three tier flow design. Correct. In terms of the number of hops. So how do you actually manage that? Very good point. So you observed correctly, because this supercluster is so large, we're talking tens of thousands of GPUs, potentially we can talk over 100,000 GPUs. That's a lot of GPUs. And just physical constraints as in power and space would mean we have a long, what's called a cable distance. So the worst case, latency in this case, we're talking around 20 microseconds round trip. Um, and as you, we previously, previously noted in the other blog, the latency within a block is about 6.5 microseconds round trip. So latency has gone up, but it's still we're talking not very high latencies. Now, in order to account for that higher latency, what we're doing is we have, because this is a QoS enabled network, as we talked about in the other blog, we have made sure that the switches and the silicon and the chipsets we chose have that right amount of buffering. And we have made sure to allocate the right amount of buffers to the queue that the ML GPU workloads would use. So we have taken care of the higher worst case latency here. Got it. So this is not just like a regular three-tier flow, which is, you know, it's been, a, it's been around for a while. Correct. It's essentially something that's designed so that we can do lossless networking, if you will, yes. using higher buffers that are specifically tuned across all these devices Correct. in order to make this three-tier flow supercluster work in conjunction with RDMA. Very true. You use the right word, the, the word that I missed. The operating word is lossless. So this is a lossless RDMA network. And lossless networking means the switches don't drop packets and they have intelligent congestion notification system built into it to avoid packet loss. And all of that still applies, yeah. but we just made sure we account for the worst case higher latency so the packets are never dropped still. Cool. So that's great for you know uh, 20 microseconds is pretty still pretty great compared to any other virtualized you know networking if you will. Mm -hmm. Typically that's like an R of magnitude. Correct. You know better than like you know a, a cross AD virtual network that we mm -hmm. uh, we might find. Um, but still like you know there are workloads that are extremely sensitive to latency and they still may want the six seven microsecond latency. How how do we deal with that in the supercluster? Very good point. Firstly, as you said, the latency, the worst case latency we talked about is still 10 to 20 times lower than what you would typically experience in a cloud network. But in order to um, support workloads that need lower latency or that don't really need the scale we're talking about here. Like imagine you have a small GPU cluster. You don't need tens of thousands of GPUs. You need a, maybe a thousand GPUs or an HVC workload or an Oracle database workload that maybe doesn't need that large a scale or really cares about low latency. So what we do for those workloads is we have a control plane that figures out where to deploy a customer's workload. And it takes into account this latency. So if you have a small enough workload that fits in a cluster, it would only be deployed in what we call a single block. So you would then experience- Like a, you know, a HPC or a database exactly. cluster workloads essentially go into a single exactly. block. Or even a smaller GPU workload. Yep, it'll go sense. in a single block and it'll experience the lower latency. So we struck the balance between scale and latency using what we call placement. Yeah, makes sense, cool. Uh, how about GPU workloads, though? They, I mean, let's say they actually span multiple of these blocks. Uh, you know, are they essentially going to be deal have to deal with the 20 microsecond latency all the time? Very good point. Uh, the answer is not all the time. And let's take a look at how we do that. In fact, um, we believe it's an innovative um, thing we've done. So as we talked about in the other blog, we have this thing called network locality hints. So we have a service that provides network locality information to the customers and help them build their, for example, their GPU topology, their ML topology to take advantage of that. So let's take a look at that here. So here we're showing a workload that has eight hosts behind four different top of the rack switches in two different blocks. So this is one block, that's another block. Now, if the workload didn't know anything about locality, then any GPU could be talking to any other GPU at the same time, and you could have relatively higher latency. Still low numbers, but higher than what it needs to be. So what we've done is we make network locality transparent to the customer. We make that information available to the customer. And what in this case the customer has done is they've interconnected their GPU in a way where two GPUs on the top of their X switch, half of their traffic stays local to the top of their X switch. For GPUs within the block, something like 85% of their traffic stays local. If you look at all these links, they're local to the block. 
just occasionally some of these links go across blocks. And this, what this means is most of the time, most of the traffic has really low latency. Occasionally, some of the traffic has that 20, 20-ish 20 microsecond latency. But the end result is, on average, your latency is much lower. In fact, half of the traffic has even less than 6.5 microseconds of latency because they're local to the top of the rack switch. So this is what we call network locality or placement hints. Got it. And it, you know, if, if a lot of the traffic is actually constrained within a tour or a block, that also helps reduce you know, flow collisions Correct. You know, at many levels of these you right. know, the three. Very good flows. observation. So we got a very nice side benefit, which is customers get really high throughput because the, this thing called flow collision, which is, which is a common um, phenomena in all networks where two fl flows could collide on a single link, the probability of that is much reduced. So in, you not only get lower latency, you get higher throughput. Got it, cool. Well, to summarize, essentially the supercluster is a three-tier flow network, but it's a whole bunch of optimizations. The, the three big things that I think are heard were one, we have buffers that are tuned for the approximate latency diameter mm -hmm. in the network itself, so that we can actually preserve the lossless Correct. aspect of the you know, supercluster. And second, we have placement mechanism in our control plane where when you launch you know, GPU nodes or maybe database nodes or like whatever, mm -hmm. they actually tend to, you know, as much as possible, be placed within the same block or maybe even within the same tor Correct. to reduce the latency as well as to decrease the probability of flow collisions across the That's network. That's higher throughput. Right, and which results in higher throughput. And you know, and, and then the third, we are even for workloads that actually span multiple blocks or tours, we actually have placement hints that can be passed down to the you know orchestration mechanism. Correct. You know, like a GPU work, the GPU workloads, where the, the algorithm can essentially use the locality within Correct. the orchestration itself to limit the traffic within tours or maybe blocks as much as possible, so, exactly. you know, reducing the latency as well as you know, reducing the probability of flow collision. Correct, you said it better than I could have. Thank you. Cool, thank you, Jack. Appreciate the time. Thank you. thank you for joining.